What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. Subscribe, help me grow. All right, so let's, now that I got that out of the way, uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about Iron Palm and why I've changed my mind about it and I'm more open to it now. So why I think that Iron Palm is actually useful. Now, I haven't done enough research on it, but I've made a video in the past and that was when I started YouTube like about, uh, I don't know, something like 18 months ago, two months ago. And, uh, you know, I criticized it and I got a lot of slack for that. And hey, it's part of the game. You know, you have your opinion and people are gonna, you know, have uh, opposing opinions and then they're gonna be, uh, you know, very opinionated to, and express themselves and call you an idiot, which is fine. <laughs> Training with different people, people who actually are very good at things that I already do, who are also on top of that good at, you know, uh, Wing Chun and, and different more traditional arts. It's very hard to convince me if you can't, if you're not actually functional and you can't, uh, you can't really fight, right? Because some, some people, and it depends on why you train an art, but if you train a martial art and you can't fight, I'm not going to be convinced by you telling me that your art really is functional and working and stuff like that. And a lot of uh, guys who train in traditional martial arts, they don't do any, they don't do any sparring or pressure testing, like you guys like to say, like call it. It's kind of a funny term to me, pressure testing. Somebody wrote in the comments once, like, oh, if, if someone writes pressure testing, you know right away, it means they don't know how to fight. <laughs> I found that funny. As I was saying, my buddy who was, um, I said this in the Wing Chun video, but my buddy who was helping me train in striking did a lot of, uh, did Wing Chun, did uh, Kung Fu, did, you know, Taekwondo, and he's into, uh, you know, uh, Judo and BJJ too. So uh, when he kicked my ass, essentially, that's when I realized, he started explaining to me, well, you know, like this is the usefulness of, you know, uh, Wing Chun and this is why like conditioning is very important. So I'm, I'm gonna get to the conditioning part because we were sparring and the thing is the first time we did it on, uh, uh, we did it, uh, we didn't have any shin guards and my shins took a beating and a half. And then after that, I put the shin guards and we continued. But I mean, after that, like the next day, Terrible. So then I was thinking to myself and I had this discussion with my buddy about, uh, you know, shin conditioning and how, you know, you should desensitize it, kill the nerves and condition it at the same time too by one way to do it is to take a bottle and to kill the nerves. And at the same time, you're kicking the bag, boom, boom, boom. So you're conditioning it with the bag, but you could also take a stick, ta -ta 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 -ta, like play with it, you know, not, 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 not play with it. That way you create like very small fractures. Obviously you gotta go progressively at it and then heal it up. I didn't enjoy that, man. Cause I was thinking to myself, you know, like I check a kick or I kick a guy and he checks my kick. And that, that's what was happening. I was kicking him and he was checking my kicks and damn, that hurt. So imagine you do that in a street fight, you know, like you had to, not that I'm into street fighting or anything like that, but you know, hey, we train because uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's fun. And it's a practical skill to have too, to be able to defend yourself. But imagine you're in the street, you know, you kick, you, the guy, you know, checks your kick. It hurts you so much that you got to stop or you're incapacitated because when you're not used to getting leg kicks and blocking and your shin's not conditioned, I mean, yeah, that could take you out, man. So now then I realize the importance of conditioning. And then I'm like, well, wait a second. If that applies to your, uh, to your shins, then it should apply to your hands too. I was wrong when I made that video, even though I did change my mind and I did talk to a lot of guys uh, who, uh, who made comments and stuff like that. And we had a couple of exchanges and, and they enlightened me on the subject. Now I realized, yeah, you know what? The hands is the same thing. The hands, the forearms, you know? So that's why like in traditional arts, these guys are like banging it up, you know, conditioning your forearms and stuff like that. Cause you want to make it, well, obviously you want to have some, some muscle there, right? It's always good, but you also have to condition it. Muscle is not enough. You need conditioning to make it nice and hard, right? Like the bones, you know, over time. And of course you want to kill a little bit of the nerves there where there's practically no muscle so that, you know, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't, you're not just incapacitated, bam, you know, you get that, that really strong hit here or here or whatever. And you just like, Oh, that's why now I'm like, well, that makes sense. Because like, if I'm, if we're fighting, boom, 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 like, you know, like bone on bone, man, you, you like, you're gonna break your fist. In judo, it's very important to have a strong hand, strong grips. Now, if you were to condition your hands and do a lot of exercises for your wrists, for your fingers and stuff like that, like have them get your, your hand muscles and your finger muscles strong, 
and on top of that, and your wrist strong too, and on top of that, condition them so that they could withstand impact. Man, I think you have an edge. And, and even, even for judo, like you would, you know how you see judo guys and BJJ guys, they have like tape all over their, their fingers, man. It's like they're taped up, it's all busted up. But I think you would actually benefit from, uh, sorry, I just flexed my chest. Anyways, I believe in iron palm, conditioning your, your bones and stuff like that. Obviously, I don't know how to do it properly, but you know, I'm gonna reach out to one of my buddies on YouTube. He's another YouTuber. One, one other thing that I was doing when um, I was training with my, my buddy who was helping me with my guard, my sparring, and for me to not flinch anymore and then to, to absorb like, you know, the punches, to take the punches and to realize, you know, if I take them properly, then, you know, I'm not gonna get knocked out. It's gonna, obviously, I'm gonna feel something, but it's not gonna hurt, the, I'm not gonna die. The first sparring, mouthpiece, shin, uh, shin guards, for now, still, we still need it, right? Shin guards, and then we would spar without, without gloves. And so we would just tap each other. Obviously we would kick, we would throw, but we're not, we're just tapping, tapping. It's a completely different game than when you have a pair of boxing gloves. Boxing gloves, you have all this, all this, so it's easier for you to cover up, right? But when your hands are open, now you have your fingers. So, you know, there's so much more grabbing. So that's where Wing Chun and a lot of stuff that you can do with your arms here is, is it becomes more useful. If we were really going at it, like high impact, high speed, it's gonna happen that we're gonna throw at, and at the same time, our, our, our forearms or our fists are gonna freaking connect, you know, bone on bone. Like you throw a punch and this guy goes like this, you know, pack, and you get it here, or you get, or you try to uppercut him, but he blocks you here. That's why my view has changed regarding iron palm training. Conditioning my shins for sure, but even my hands, my fingers. I want to be a complete martial artist. I'm not just a uh, grappler. Like my specialty is grappling, but I I enjoy all of it. That's it, guys. Love you. Peace. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. Also, there's a link down below. If you guys click on it, it's gonna bring you to a page where you could follow me on all my social media platforms. And you can also apply for, uh, for coaching so that you guys can work directly with me. Also, one last thing guys, if you have any questions, right, send me an email. That's the best way to reach me. I read them and I'll, I'll answer your, your questions, man. All right, peace.